Welcome, 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 everybody. We are so glad that you chose to join us for this edition of the Faith Builders broadcast. We're just convinced that God has some wonderful things to share with you today about your walk with Him and who you are in Christ. I am Philip Steele. This is my wife, Michelle, and we are teaching this week, all this month, actually, from her book, Redeemed and Righteous by Nature that she wrote some time ago. It's the first in a series that we're calling, calling Our Being in Christ series. And we believe that the truth that's shared in this book, because it's founded on the Word of God, will make a difference in your life and change your life. Yes. I don't know if you know it or not, but what you're about to hear is going to make a mark in your life that cannot be erased. And you're going to be so glad you tuned in because your life's about to change in Jesus' name. Yes. And it changes because the Word of God is the change agent. And as we bring the Word today, we want to go uh, locate where we are. And we've been talking in this series about our being in Christ and about um, the, the base scripture, the foundation scripture being 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 that says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ. And the phrase in Christ is used in the New Testament more than 130 yeah. times. If you yeah. include for instance, the phrase in him, in whom, in Christ, and put all those together, you're going to find over 130 times that the Holy Spirit has referenced our position in Christ. And through those scriptures, you can begin to see all of the different elements and uh, uh, provisions of our being in Christ. And so we have said that 2 Corinthians 5.17 they are GPS coordinates. Yeah. That is a verse that is a GPS coordinate that tells us where we are. For instance, if you go to a big airport or you go to a new mall and you want to get to your next gate or you want to get to a certain store, you've got to go find the map that tells you where you are at that moment. And from there, you can plot your course to where you need to be. And for you to get into the victory that is ours in Christ or the authority that is ours in Christ or the healing that is ours in Christ or the marriage made in heaven that's mm -hmm. ours in Christ, all of those things are ours. And yet to get to them, you've got to first identify you are here yeah. in Christ. And so uh, with that, we want to remember that we are passed from death to life because if any man be in Christ he is a new creature I was an old creature and you know I appreciate how Ephesians 2 gives us a before and after yeah. picture in the in Ephesians chapter 2 that, that first part of that chapter talks about before Christ. Right. Right. And you know, I love those stories that you can see the before the and after picture. I, I'm yeah. a true to life kind of girl. <laughs> and I like to watch the before and after picture and see how much weight they lost or see the makeover, what the makeover did, or even, a, you know, the house makeover. You see the before and how bad it was. And then you see the, the after. Yeah. And so that's what happens in Ephesians yeah. 2. You see the before picture and and I'll just flip over there and and just identify it says you were dead in trespasses and sin so you were you're no were. longer no as a longer. believer yeah. dead in trespasses and sin it says in verse 2 you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience we all had our behavior our conversation in times past in the in the desires of our flesh fulfilling those desires and the desires of the mind and we were nature. by nature by nature by nature the children of wrath, but that's the before Christ picture. Yeah. That's that's the old me, the that's Michelle right. BC before Christ right. picture. And so if you were to go back and look at me before the day I gave my life to the Lord in August 10th of 1992, you mm -hmm. would see that I was that person dead in sin. I was that person walking according to the desire of my flesh and fulfilling the yeah. desires of my flesh and of my mind. Yeah. I was that person who was uh, uh, being guided and directed by the prince of the power of the air, but not now. Right. Not now. Now I'm in, the, in Christ, and now I have a whole new... Uh, 
I have a whole new source. I'm not dead in trespasses and sin, but I'm alive unto God. That's right. And the life of God that's dwelling in me, uh, it, by His Holy Spirit, He leads me, He communicates with me, He provides wisdom for the decisions that I need to make. He provides the spiritual uh, supply for our marriage that's right. and for our raising of our, our children and, and the functioning of the ministry. I'm doing all of that out of our being in Christ. That's right. My position in him. And, and the, the thing there is we're no longer functioning from a place of spiritual death. And again, that can seem very foundational and very fundamental, but after having pastored for, well, almost 23 years now, uh, it, next December will be 23 years. Yes. After having pastored that length of time, I feel like Brother Hagin, you know, I think I've kind of just stumbled on some things. And one of the things that I see is every, almost every instance where someone is struggling with something, where they feel there's a deficiency in their life, it can be traced back to functioning out of that place of the old nature or spiritual death instead of functioning from the place of spiritual life and who they are in Christ. Yes, yes. Because you function out of that place of spiritual death when you function out of your own ideas, your own mind, yes. the natural mind. The scripture says what in 1 Corinthians 2, it says the natural mind does not receive the things of the Spirit of God because they're foolishness unto him. It doesn't make sense to the natural mind that I can be the same person, the same age I am, the same weight, the same hair color, but I'm new. Yes. Right? Doesn't make sense to the natural mind. But notice what Paul said. He said that we all were by nature the children of wrath, but it says that even when we were dead in sins, God quickened us, brought us to life together with Christ. By grace you're saved and hath caused us to sit together and made, or caused us, uh, raised us up together, excuse me, and caused us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Yes. That heavenly places is a seat of authority. Yeah. That comes with that new nature. Yes. That new assignment. Yes. Praise God. So the instruction is to put off, if, if you look at Ephesians 4 and verse uh, 17, notice what he says here. This is such a powerful scripture to me. He says, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their minds, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's with them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness and all greediness, but you've not so learned Christ. Yes. If so be that you've heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, notice that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, yes. which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, I heard my pastor say something one time. He said, there are people that will read that and say, renewed in the spirit of your mind, and they'll say, well, that's a subconscious mind. And he said, there's really not a subconscious mind and a conscious mind, it's all just your mind. So Paul says the key here, honey, is that you put off the former life, the former conversation, that you put it off. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind, yes. and you put something new on. Yes. Put on the new man, the new you in Christ, the, the being in Christ, who you are because you've yeah. received him and you've been born again. Yeah. You've got to put that on. Yeah. You've got to put off the old, and you've got to put on the new. And that link in between of the being the renewed, one way I like to say when it says be renewed in the spirit of your mind, 
uh, is be renewed until your mind is spiritual. Yeah. Until your mind agrees with the, the yeah. born again spirit, the, spiritual with, uh, the thing. word yeah. of God that's coming into your spirit. Yeah. Because a Christian with an unrenewed mind is hesitant about obeying a prompting of the spirit. A Christian with an unrenewed mind is, is slow, miserable. It, miserable <laughs> because they're carnal. Yeah. <laughs> the, they are slow to respond in obedience. Yeah. They're slow in, they're not persuaded by the word yet because that carnal thinking is constantly being an obstacle to their walk of faith or their yeah. walk in the spirit. And so he says that you put off the old. And so that's not just talking about uh, don't act the way that you used to act right. or, or even don't think the way that you used to think. That's included in that. But don't live out of that. Yeah. Don't live out of yeah. who you were without Christ. Yeah. Don't live out of, out of that, um, that part of you yeah. because there's no, there's no victory in there. There's no wisdom in there. There's no um, authority there. But if you'll stand in your position in Christ and you'll say, I am a child of God, bought by the blood. I've accepted Jesus as my Lord. I'm yeah. born again. I am no longer under the circumstance. Right. I'm going to operate from this position in the family of God. Yeah. And that's why when we take communion and we, we receive the blood, that blood is the New Testament in my blood. Right. The New Testament. So every time I take communion and I'm about to receive of that cup, mm -hmm. I think about my benefits, yeah. I think about the covenant, and I think about my responsibilities yeah. as a child, a, a child of God. Because the, the operating from your position in Christ, operating from that place in Christ, is, uh, is like seeing yourself as the person responsible um, you know, in your life that if I've got to make the decision, not from the natural standpoint, I've got to make this decision from the spiritual truth mm -hmm. of who I am, because that's where I'll win. Yeah. That's where I'll gain victory. That's yeah. where I will, will be in line with God and God can move in line with my decision. Right. If I'm making a decision out of the natural, there's sometimes God can't help it because it would have to violate his word. Do you remember how Charles Capp said that the Lord um, told him, don't, um, don't pray anything you can't believe me for? And right. Brother Capp said, well, my prayer time is going to be really short then. And God said, you are, are trying to get me to move on the basis of your need. And there are things that I want to do for you. And right. I, this is not word for word, but this is what the essence of what he mm -hmm. told him. There are things that I want to do for you, but I would have to violate my word to do them. Right. So I want you to go to my word and I want you to build your faith and then come to me and receive them. Yeah. Why? Because that's the way of the kingdom. Yeah. We talked about entering into the kingdom. You, unless the man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom way of mm -hmm. doing things. And, or you could say, unless you operate from your position in Christ, yeah. you'll never enter into those kingdom yeah. ways. You can't. The, there are things that, uh, when you read this, there are things, examples of how we do this in our everyday life. Yes. Put off the old man. Put on the new. He says things like, put away lying, speak truth, be angry and don't sin. Neither give place to the devil. It is impossible to not give place to the devil if you're not living out of the new creature. Oh, mercy. That's good. You just can't. And that's why you'll see people that are redeemed from what? Sin, sickness, Poverty, disease, they're redeemed from it, but they don't know how to stand against it, or they can't stand against it, or they won't stand against it. It's, it's because I don't realize who I am, and I haven't put that old off and put on the new. That's such a good example. Then I'm equipped to resist. Yes. Then I'm equipped to resist. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, very simple example. I'm not going to be untruthful because the new creature speaks truth. Yes. Right? I'm, I'm not going to, to be angry and throw a fit 
because the new creature seeks peace with all men. Well, right on the other hand, I'm not going to just be sick with that sickness when I have been redeemed as the new creature from sickness. I've been redeemed from that, and the new creature understands I don't have to have it. Yes. I don't have to have it. So there's practical ways that he says this is what will happen when you put on the new man is you'll put off lying, you'll put off uh, uh, sinful anger, you'll be able to resist the devil. When those thoughts come to your mind, you'll realize, wait a minute, I don't have to put up with that. I'm a new creature. I can cast those down. I can cast down imaginations and overcome those thoughts. Yes. Because I'm a new creature in Christ. Amen. Jesus used the example or the illustration of he is the vine and we are the branches. Yeah. Over in uh, John chapter 15, he talked about that. And what a great illustration for us to understand our being in Christ. Uh, he gave us a picture to look at in this uh, illustration. He said, uh, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. You are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Yeah. So the life that is in the vine is in the branch. It's not a different kind of life. If you were to, to use that as a tree, what's in the tree branch is coming from the tree trunk. Yeah. And it's not a different life. It's not a different form of life. It's not a generic right. s version of life. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same. Yeah. And the same life in you and I as believers is the same life that's in Christ. That living connection. The same victory in Christ is the victory in me. The same authority in Christ is the authority in me. He said, abide there. Live there. Yeah. Live from there. From that Make state. your decisions from there. Deal with your circumstances from there. Yeah. Don't deal with your circumstance from the position of need. Oh, Lord, I need it. You know, there's no receiving in that position. There's no, because it's not provided there. Yeah. I remember years ago, we, we uh, signed up for um, uh, Eagle. Uh, it, it was a satellite, golden, not golden eagle, Sky but Angel. Sky Angel. And so we got a satellite. We went and had to, we had to install it ourselves. Yeah. And uh, you were out there pointing the dish, and I'm standing there looking at the TV to see if it's getting the connection and seeing hollering the, at you, the, you know, the, through yeah, the, oh, we're the a, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. And it was just little tiny, tiny, tiny Increments. movements yeah. that you were making to get it. But when it, when you got it in the right position, everything yeah. started working right. You know, I heard that there was a NASA satellite that was sent up into yeah. space, and it was like multi-million dollar investment yeah. for them to send this satellite up in there. It had all of the, the e equippings and, and uh, different um, newest technology, and they, they launched it up into outer space. And you know what? They couldn't get it online. It wouldn't work. Yeah. They kept trying to get it online, and they realized it's not in the right orbit. And so they had, thankfully, had put little rocket boosters on the outside. And so they had to do those little, uh, ignite those little rocket boosters until just to s shift it until it got in the right orbit. And when it got in the right orbit, all of the technology started working. Everything came online and yeah. everything started working. Yeah. And that's what happens if a person is trying to deal with their life and they're out of position, it's not working. Yeah. They could be just that little, that, that, that shifting of getting in line with the word. And, if, if they'll, and that is the shift. 
It, you've, you've got to take the word like a rocket booster and reposition yourself. Yeah. I am not under the circumstance. Yeah. I am not going under. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm going over. God said that he always causes me to triumph. And so you've got to take the word out of your heart, pull yeah. it through your mouth, and you've got to reposition yourself in that situation and rise above that situation in Christ and then speak from your place of authority. Well, I think it's important to understand that that the way you overcome is determined by where you're living from. Yes. And ever what's going on in the world, we've said over the years, and, and kind of jokingly, but it's the truth, we've said over the years, the world has went through many catastrophes that we didn't even know was going on. Not because we, we deny things or can't see what's going on. It's that ever what the world faces Believers are in the world, but Jesus said something. You are not of the world. That's right. You're in it, but you're not of it. Well, people will say, well, that's right. We don't sin. We don't. No, 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 no. It's saying, the Bible says you are of God and have overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So if I keep my focus on I'm living from this vine, I'm living from the, the living connection. Ever what's going on in the world, the vine hasn't changed. The source of my life hasn't changed. The source of my new creation so hasn't good. changed. That is so good. And so I am still being fed life. I'm still being fed spiritual victory regardless of what's going on. Like the tree planted by the river of water. It said, he will not see when he comes. <laughs> That's what Jeremiah said. Yes. That he'll be like the tree planted by the river. And when trouble comes, he won't even know it because he's, he's, his roots are in that source. We got three minutes. I want to remi remind you of this. When, when, when we lived in, in Kansas, we would walk and I would run. You would, we, but we would walk every evening together in Shawnee Mission Park. And we would walk by this huge oak tree that had to be 150 years old. Yeah. Had to be huge. And Michelle, you'll remember, it was the middle of one of the hottest summers ever. It was so hot that lee trees were shedding their leaves. Yes. But we would walk by that oak tree and it was flourishing. <laughs> and you could see why. Because just down the hill across the little meadow, was a huge lake. That tree's roots were in that water source. Yes. And trees all around it were dying. Yes. But it was connected to the water source. And we would walk by and we would say, that's us. That's us. <laughs> that's us. That's us. And, and, and the thing is, is I realize and I recognize in times of trouble and in times of, of, of challenge, that people are facing challenges, and I understand that, but our job as believers is to say, look, here's the answer. You can change the source, because if you're getting water from a polluted source, it's not going to provide the nourishment that you need. You're going to get whatever is in the source. Yes. We're not getting our victory and our ability from the polluted source called the world, we're getting our victory and our ability and our life from the unpolluted, the Bible says, the uncontaminatable source of the living Word of God. Incorruptible. Incorruptible Amen. seed. From the vine. You may be watching us today and you say, Pastor Philip, Pastor Michelle, I would like to have that life. Simplest thing in the world. All you've got to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead and receive him as your Lord, and it's yours. Say that with me. I believe, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. That God raised Jesus from the dead. And I make him my Lord right I now. I make him my Lord right in now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' you name. You just got connected to the vine. You just got connected to the source of life. Yes. And God wants to do great things in your life. Please write us, call us, email us. Let us know you prayed that prayer with us. We'd be glad to agree with you for the victory that's yours in Christ to come into your life in an unprecedented manner and in an unprecedented way. We believe by personal experience 
and from the Word of God that God has great things in store for you and that your life is going to take an immeasurable change in the coming days. Till we see you again, please remember to build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God. God bless you. When a person is born again, they aren't remodeled. They are recreated in Christ Jesus. Their new life is so dramatically different. There is no way to understand the fullness of who they are, what belongs to them, or what they can do without the help of God's Word. To properly identify the position of righteousness with our Heavenly Father, we need the help of God's Word. To understand what it means to be redeemed from the past, from sickness, from lack, and from the curse operating in this world, we need to know what the Word says. In my newest book, Redeemed and Righteous by Nature, we have that scriptural emphasis. You're going to discover to be in Christ is not just a figure of speech. It is an actual geographical location in the Spirit. The life that is in Christ Jesus is the same life operating in you. Jesus is the vine and you are the branch. That righteousness is not something you have, it's who you are in Christ. How to receive from God, how to confront the enemy from this place in Christ, and so much more. I really believe this book is gonna bring great understanding to anyone who is hungry to strengthen themselves and who they are in Christ. Make sure to get your copy today. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can watch live streams or watch messages again to build your faith anytime you desire with trusted teaching from pastors Philip and Michelle Still as well as guest ministers and special events on our YouTube channel. Subscribe today and be ready to hear what God has for you. This is Pastor Philip Still and I want to invite you out to Little Rock's new Word of Faith Church, Faith Builders Church right here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Our address is 10500 Markham. We have services Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Sunday nights at 6 p.m., and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., our hour of power. If you're hungry for the moving of the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of healing, the working of miracles, if you're hungry for the moving of the Holy Ghost, then we're the church for you. We value the Word of God and believe that the Word of God is the answer to all of your problems. We have a whole slate of services that are available for your family. We have nursery ministry, children's ministry, and youth ministry, all geared towards building your faith and framing your world by the Word of God. I'd really love to see you. Come and see us. And until then, God bless you. Thank you for your partnership. We have many ways that you can connect with us through your generous giving or prayers. Not only will your seed into this ministry help spread the gospel, it will produce a harvest in your own life. You can sow online, by mail, or by phone. Thank you for your faithful partnership.